Good afternoon YouTube, warbles on a lot here. The Pitts Python has been repaired. We used about five tubes or five sticks of hot glue, Rowan of Rin, the eight foot tall alpha male kangaroo has come to visit and cast his approving eye all over the repairs. Haven't you, matey? Eh? As you chew your cud. Yes, you're a happy kangaroo. Yes, complete with a bullet hole in your ear. And I'm ever so glad that you don't blame me for the redneck maniac who tried to shoot at you in the middle of the night. But back to the topic at hand. Yes, mate, I understand. Here we have the repaired Pitts Python. We had very little trouble with the aileron hinge repairs. The, uh, the magnetic cowling clips all went back on as expected. I was able to find a screw and I was able to put the entire centre section strut system back into operational functionality. Yes, it's interesting, isn't it, Rowan? There was a little bit of EPO foam from the underbelly of the Sky Hero, incorporated into patching the left lower wing, but pretty much everything else, more or less structural, was able to be fixed with hot glue, pressurized and pushed into the defects. The underside of the wing has also been repaired with tape as well as hot glue which as you can see I've been fairly liberal with in my application of in order to attain some kind of functional strength for practical purposes because this model appears to have been designed to take off and land on concrete and it's probably never going to do that. I've also used hot glue to stick the cowling on and repair the defects in the cowling caused by its first maiden flight crash. As it was foretold within the prophecy, the hillbilly has used tie wire instead of nuts and bolts in order to secure the center section strut to wing attachment because there was only a single nut and bolt remaining. Possibly the biggest defect in the repair process is the angle of the dangle difference between the two spats. I figure that the left hand spat on the far side of this picture is slightly too far nose down. But all up, I'm pretty pleased with attempting to repair a foam Pitts Python. And here I think we can see something of the reason that caused the crash, the two rear servos were obviously installed by an idiot when the aircraft was put in the box. That's the rudder servo. And as you can see, it's just about on full forward. But the rudder is in fact straight. With no corrections on. I must say, I've just discovered one more place where I need to apply some hot glue but here is the rudder servo push rod 
or push pull rod connector. And as you can see, the servo is at full forward travel, i.e. full right rudder, in order to acquire a neutral setting. On the other side of the fuselage, voila. What we can see there is that the elevator is in a completely similar condition, which means that when young felony lad attempted to take off, he wriggled his control sticks. He saw the elevator move up when he pulled the stick up. He saw the elevator move down when he pushed the stick forward. What he didn't pay much attention to was how far it moved. And therefore, he took off with only neutral to up elevator available, and that's why the aircraft completed a three-second loop and attempted to destroy itself in three seconds, which is $300,000 an hour. So by my efforts today, which have only taken about four hours, which is kind of about as much time as my son spent on the weekend, fitting the tow bar that he sourced on eBay and had delivered to his workshop onto my replacement Subaru. To say nothing of the amount of time he spent trying to figure out how to fit the 1998 Subaru Forester bull bar onto the 2000 vintage Subaru Forester that I am in possession of. So, seeing as I haven't actually paid him for uh, finding the $100 bull bar or shipping it at $317 worth of freight costs, I figure the absolute least I can do for his birthday, which comes up in a couple of days' time, a particular moment when I am actually broke, the least I can do is fix his pits so he can have another go at flying aerobatics in a four channel radio controlled symmetrical section pits special. After all, it's not really his fault that he wants to fly a pit special considering that that's a photograph of me back in the day sitting in a Pitts 2A. That's a 200 horsepower factory assembled pit special. So why wouldn't my son want to have a radio controlled Pitts? And why wouldn't it be my job to fix it for his birthday? It's family, yeah? I have actually got four landings and two hours in a Pitts S2A. Not the one I was photographed in. The one that I flew was VHFFF. And the one I was photographed in was VHWEB. Because I've had a fair bit to do with more than one pit special before I inherited the job of fixing the one belonging to my son. Warbles on a lot to YouTube. Ciao. Payback is not always a bitch. Yeah?